number of people, the number of medical people who were in the room, um, and, and all rushing around doing things, it was quite a... Most people, I guess, don't ever get to see anything like that. We had twins. Unfortunately, Solomon, Joel's brother, wasn't strong enough and well enough to be resuscitated when he was born. We weren't expecting to meet either of them and our expectations because of complications in the pregnancy had been managed really to quite a low level. We did get to meet them both. We had some very precious time with Solomon. Hey, Shall can we do, do it now? Uh -huh. Uh, Joel awesome. weighed 410 grams, which is just under a pound. Um, we didn't get to see him for a few hours because, like I say, um, it was very slick in the delivery suite and he went straight to the unit and then we were having some time to meet Solomon. We now know that those first 10, 15 minutes of life are really, really important and things that we do, the very subtle things that we can do, can have a big impact on that patient's life later on. Um, especially in terms of their development. The main target for, for this device is premature babies um, and especially those born under 32 weeks who are at risk of things like hypothermia um, who can get cold very quickly in the delivery room. Those babies always have a hat put on them to preserve their heat because they lose a lot of heat through their head. Um, so we incorporate this heart light device, this heart rate monitor into the, into the hat. First of all, ventilate the baby. And at the same time, if I'm on my own, I need to make an assessment of the heart rate, which involves taking off my stethoscope, popping it on. Once I've made my assessment and, and decide where the heart rate is, decide what interventions I need to do. As you can see, that interrupts the resuscitation. Well, sometimes our babies, they weigh 500 grams and, and can pretty much fit into the palm of your hand. And you've got to get a hat onto those, you've got to get all your equipment in and all the, all the people around in order to make that assessment. Um, and so having this small device that just sits within the hat that goes on anyway, um, giving you that continuous feedback without you needing to interrupt your resuscitation is really important. This particular device was originally used on coal miners and monitoring the miners down um, over at Anglesey. Um, and we used to put it on the, on the coal miners' heads. Um, and one day, um, John Crow, a colleague of mine also on the project, he presented the work to Don, Don Sharkey here in the hospital. And Don had the great idea of saying, well, maybe this could not could be moved from the coal miner's head to a newborn baby's head. That is shown into the skin. And they are actually being switched on and off at quite a high frequency. They were at 500 hertz, 500 times a second. You can't see it, because you can't see 500 times a second. But our electronics can. Right, at this end here, yeah. provides the power, and as you say, also the control unit, and also the data acquisition, such when the light comes back into the the centre of this device, uh, there's a photo detector, and the photo current we pick up is then converted into a voltage, which is then digitised and read into the onboard computer on this device. Well, we would hope if we can get going with our development now um, and get those clinical trials underway, that um, there's always the potential that within three to five years we could be moving this product forward and getting it into the clinic. Well, that's one of the reasons why. You know, people like myself get involved in it because it is extremely rewarding to see a device that was in the laboratory and then being used in the case where a baby has been resuscitated um, and without, without a device such as this um, there could be some serious problems with the baby itself so hence you're bound to feel uplifted by that and hence we all are.